Welcome one and all. We are happy to be here praising God one more evening. And we ask that you like, share, and subscribe the link to the Let's Talk About Thing campaign. You got to tell someone about Jesus. And as we sing this evening, we invite you all to sing with us as we give praises to Almighty God. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. Come on. Do you need Jesus? Trumpet will sound all about death. 
shall rise, bright as the seed in the sky, growing where no one dies. Heaven my Jesus is, my Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will be there too, trumpet will sound, all of us. Just bless the name of the Lord. Thank you so very much, Asana Praise, who are serving for us as the song service, the praise team here at Let's Talk About Him. I Follow Jesus online evangelistic series brought to you by the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. We're excited to have you, and we're so very thankful that you have invited your friends to share in this rich experience with us as we broadcast to you from Jamaica 
to the entire world. I want to say thanks to those individuals who are tuning in on Northern Caribbean University's flagship station, NCU Radio 91.1, 91.3, and 91.5. Those who are watching on NCU Television via channel 188 and 617 on the Float Television Network. Thank you for joining us on Bless TV and the 13 affiliate stations, namely CTL, NCS, Starcom, Quest in Lucy, St. Thomas Cable, Stat Come, Astra in Portland and Blackrock, Intech in Buff Bay, Gemini in Anato Bay, Cable One in Highgate, Pro Cable in Stony Hill, West Star in Trelawney, and Com Cable also in Grange Hill. Thank you for joining us across the entire Jamaica Union territory on each of our conferences platforms in North Jamaica, Northeast Jamaica, West Jamaica, Central Jamaica, and the East Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Everywhere you turn, you should be hearing us talk to you about him. Come, follow us as we go from October 3 through to the 7th, through to the 17th of October in what is going to be a, a wonderful spiritual experience in the word, in prayer, in music, and as we share with those individuals across the length and breadth of our island. Thanks to those who are joining us from Miami in the Perrin, Perrin SDA Church, and also those from the South England Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. We appreciate your time, and we thank you so very much for being with us. Each evening, we will be having an active live engagement with our fields, institutions across the Jamaica Union Territory. The, our presidents will be sharing with us their own perspective on Let's Talk About Him, their own perspective on Jesus, and their own perspective on his life, his work, and his mission. It is our delight this evening to have a sit down with the president of the East Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. East Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists comprises the parishes of St. Thomas, St. Andrew, and Kingston. He, the president for the East Jamaica Conference is Pastor Eric Nathan. Pastor Nathan, good evening and welcome to night number one of Let's Talk About Him. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Good to be a part of this great pro program. And I know that God is going to be doing great things for us this evening. Tell us what's happening in the East Jamaica Conference. How is Let's Talk About Him? East Jamaica Conference is pleased, excited to be a part of this single largest evangelistic strategy that has been launched in Jamaica for the past 100 years. We would not want to miss out on this great historic event, and we are excited. All our pastors are excited to be on board. All our pastors have gotten involved, and we have been using every aspect of the church's missionary program to get on board. We are using right now the Jethro Principle. That means every summer school department, every pastor, every elder in charge will be taking care of the membership of the church and all we're asking you to do, bring your friends on, share with your friends and we know that great things are going to be happening. Well, you're number one president in joining us for the entire series. We have five conferences in yes. Jamaica Union Conference and you are actually leading the pack starting tonight. So we're going to have a conversation with each of our presidents in respect to Christ. And this evening, we are going to be focusing with Pastor Eric Nathan on the forgiving Jesus. Pastor Nathan, talk to us about forgiveness as manifested in the life of Jesus Christ. My pastor, I believe when, when Revelation talks about Revelation 12 verse 12, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down with great wrath. Having great wrath because he knows his time is short. And he's doing everything to destroy God's people. And I believe that one of the things he's doing is to use the people closest to us to cause us to be upset. He's using the people closest to us to disturb us and cause us to be angry and, and, and cause us to have enmity with those who we love most. And so I believe that unless we have the understanding of what forgiveness is all about, we're going to lose the battle. And we have to use Jesus as our great example. Jesus was an example to everyone. He exemplifies what forgiveness is all about. Well, let's go right there because this series is all about talking about Jesus. We have no time for anything else. Yes. Tell us a little of how forgiveness was manifested in the life of Jesus Christ. You know, 
Can you imagine Jesus pauses dying and, and prayed for those who were hurting him, those who were killing him. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If they really knew who they were crucifying, if they really knew what the plan of salvation was about, they would not have gone the way they did. And so when I saw how Jesus, on his, on his path to death, was able to pause and pray for those who were despisefully using him and those who were crucifying him, I believe that that is an example that every follower of Christ, as we talk about Jesus, we need to talk about forgiveness because that's a part of our Christian experience. Well, there are many individuals, uh, uh, President Nathan, who are actually not Adventists. A lot of individuals are actually watching who are not Christians. So look in the camera, talk to those individuals who cannot understand this Christian concept of, of forgiveness, this, this foreign concept, if you will, in our own life's experience. For forgiveness is not something that is emphasized in today's day and world. And there are individuals here in order to embrace the message of Christ will have to forgive and receive the forgiveness of Christ. So for those who are not Adventists, those who are not Christians, what do you have to say? Let, let me first say that it is, the, it is the, the obligation of every Christian to do what the prayer says. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But the Bible says, if your enemy sins against you, you must forgive them. For if you can't forgive your enemy, then your Heavenly Father will not forgive you. So that is for Christians. But forgiveness is not only about Christian. Forgiveness is to empty ourselves of the bitterness that comes with anger and malice and grief. If we don't do that, then the reversible reaction is that we are going to suffer. And I honestly believe that some of the sicknesses that we have in our communities, in our world today, is because of the, 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 the un, ungiven forgiveness. When we have forgiveness that is locked up in our heart and the energy that we use to have bitterness and malice and, and, and grief and grime and all of those things, it poisons our system. And somebody rightly says that, that unforgiveness is like taking the poison and expect your enemy to fall down dead. We believe that one of the things that every Christian, every individual, research after research has proven that people who carry malice and the poison of envy inside of them will soon get sick. And so outside of the Christian experience, forgiveness is one of the medicine that everybody needs to take to feel better. That's one of the facts about the life of Christ, that Jesus Christ actually has focused on forgiveness. But pastors, I wrap this, down with, wrap, wrap this up with you this evening. I want you to share with us and let us know something personal. How has Jesus come through for you? What has Jesus done for you lately? You know, one of the prayers I pray every day is, Lord, help me not to keep malice in my own heart. And I pray that God will help me each day to be the prayer, the answer to the prayer that somebody has prayed. And I find myself many times when I read some place, somebody says, it just came right on time. And thank you for what you have done. Thank you. And I can only say the Lord has been using me to answer prayer for a lot of people. And so every day of my life, Jesus Christ has been working in me, through me, to relieve suffering, to help people to straighten out differences, to help to answer, to give some gifts here and there. So I believe that every day my life has been a ministry of helping others to do better and to help others to see that our own salvation is in helping others to see Jesus. Well, I'm going to test out a skill for you tonight. Uh, Mr. Keyboard is get ready because every evening, each evening, we're going to have our presidents sharing with us their favorite song about Jesus. Pastor Nathan, what's your favorite song? You know, you know, every time I think about my favorite song, the song that I pray every day is I must tell Jesus all of my sorrows. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell him all of the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. And so I must tell Jesus each well, day. Well, some persons don't know the song. Right. So I want you to just... So I will help you with the singing of the song. I no, man, you, you have to help me with the singing of the song this okay. evening. You have to help me with the singing of the song, Mr. President. My just song. one line. I must tell Jesus all of my sorrows. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus... 
and he will help me over the world the victor to win i must tell jesus i must tell jesus i cannot bear my burdens alone i must tell jesus and he will help me over the world and my victory to win. There you go, President of the East Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, sharing with you that indeed we have a friend in Jesus. Yes. We can talk with him. We can share with him. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to night number one of Let's Talk About Him. I Follow Jesus evangelistic series with Pastor Dane Al Fletcher, Youth Ministries Director for Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. But as we journey along, we have a rich feast for you and which better way to get it on the go than to have our theme song written by Pastor Jermaine Johnson from the North Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Osana Praise is going to do for us tonight, night number one, our theme song. time to pray. We believe in the power of prayer. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. As we pray tonight, we'll be interceding on behalf of all our young people. Let's pray. Eternal God and our Father, we're happy to know that you love us, and that you care for us, and that you're doing everything in your power to save us. And so Lord, we are grateful to know that you see our needs tonight or need of a Savior, most importantly. And you've given your Son, Jesus Christ, the treasure of heaven, to save our souls from sin. So we thank you, Lord, for his sacrifice on Calvary's cross. And we come before you now in the name of Jesus Christ. We come to you, Father, on behalf of our young people spread across our island home, Jamaica. Many of of them are struggling with varying issues. But we know, mighty God, that you are more than able to change lives and change hearts and change circumstances. So whatever the situations are, we ask, O oh God, that you will minister on behalf of your people, that you will reach out and meet the needs of your children. Many of your young people are struggling with depression, 
Some are struggling with anxiety. Some are struggling with abuse. Some are struggling with containing their sexual desires. Some are living in, in an environment that is not conducive to serving Jesus Christ. Some are living among family members who are making it difficult to survive. Lord, whatever the struggle, whatever the challenge, we know, O oh God, that your hand is mighty to save. We know, Holy Father, that there is no circumstance so great that your grace can't overturn. So in the name of Jesus, I place all young persons into your hands and ask that you will, in a special way, work for them. We ask that you will lift a standard against the enemy, break all strongholds. And tonight, Father, we claim victory, we claim healing, and we claim deliverance. We thank you so much for hearing and answering our prayers. And where my fallen mind would have, been, would have not been able to mention, I ask, Eternal One, that you will, in your infinite power and wisdom, meet these needs and bring change. We thank you so much for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Though you may 
not feel it or see him or know it. You're not alone. You're hurting now, but your morning, morning is coming. Grab on to Jesus And you can ride out the storm Just hold on to Jesus And ride out your storm Good evening, everyone. I'm delighted to invest just five minutes of time with you on the subject of cybersecurity. Now, the first question that you need to ask and answer is, what is cybersecurity? According to Kaspersky.com, cybersecurity is the practice of defending computers, servers, mobile devices, electronic systems, networks, and data from malicious attacks. And you may be asking, well, what does this have to do with me? And is there a life lesson involved? I'll come back to that in just a moment. But first, there are some types of malicious attacks that I'll focus right here. Number one, those targeting financial systems for greedy gain. Number two, politically motivated information gathering. Number three, attacks causing terroristic fear. And final, Attacks that damage one's computers, mobile devices, and capture credit card information or personal passwords, or even cause your devices to perform in a way that you did not intend. Here are just a few tips to protect yourself as much as possible. Number one, keep your software, apps, and operating systems up to date. Use reputable antivirus software. Number three, be really careful about opening email attachments and clicking links from persons that are not known to you. And really and truly, if you don't know the person, don't even bother click those links. Number four, use strong passwords. Those are not the ones where you have your best friend, your wife, your husband, your children's anniversary dates, birth dates, and so forth. Those are the ones that you add underscores and other characters, pluses and minuses, you understand with capital letters and lowercase letters. Nothing that's very easy to remember. Number five, just expect, and this one I really need you to get, just expect that all Wi-Fi connections that are open without passwords, it's somebody trying to get into your system. So if you must use them, and I would say don't, but if you must, look up a reputable VPN or virtual private network system. Number six and final, use parental controls software to protect your children and those for whom you have responsibility. Never ever leave a child alone to surf the web. You must know what they are experiencing online at all times. Now thankfully, the government of Jamaica does have an official national cyber security strategy which was developed with the support of the Cybersecurity Program of the Organization of American States, OAS. The strategy document can be found on the Ministry of Science, Energy, and Technology's website at www.mset.gov.jm. That's mset.gov.jm. Now this seems very technical in the little time that we have left. Is there a life lesson for me? I am so glad you asked. The Bible says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Our real threat and enemy is the devil. He's invisible to us, just like many cyber threats. The only way we can be safe from his attacks is to allow God to secure our minds. Those are the computer centers of our existence through 
Full surrender to God. Worship, prayer, diligent Bible study, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a lot of evil lurking in the World Wide Web. So again, be prayerful, avoid violent, sexual, magical, gambling-oriented, child-exploiting, and all other questionable apps, sites, and content. And by all means, please be safe out there in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you so very much, Elder L. David Harris from the Central Jamaica Conference. He's the communications director for that tip on cybersecurity. Of course, we'll have to follow up a little bit more to make sure that we get those tips very much intact. I want to say hello to the folks this evening from the West Jamaica Conference. I'm following you live here, and I'm seeing that we see have Karen Graham saying good night from Bath SDA in Westmoreland. Also seeing Clover Lee McClensie, Janet Grant, Rose Smith, Sophia Plowgrith, um, Camelia Garrick. Uh, these are some of the individuals who are watching us from the West Jamaica Conference. want to let you know that you can follow West Jamaica Conference through the WCCN and also the West Jamaica Conference Facebook and YouTube pages. And as I speak about YouTube pages, please ensure that you like, subscribe, hit the bell on any one of the conference platforms that you are watching this evening so that as soon as we go live, you will be able to participate with us. Now, yesterday evening, I did say to you that we would be having quiz today. But the issue is, tonight is really the first night. So, tonight I want you to get ready, note exactly what the preacher is saying, and then tomorrow evening, we'll be posting in the chat the quiz each evening, we'll be sharing with you the winners of the evening before. So you need to get ready. You need to ensure that you listen. Invite your friends to share. Listen to what Pastor Dane Al Fletcher will be saying to us tonight in respect to the disruption. And come tomorrow evening prepared to share. Now, one more thing we'll be doing each evening. Because of the focus on Jesus we also have to focus on prayer. Each evening, we'll be having a special season of prayer right here for you. It is important that you send in your prayer requests ahead of time so that we are able to pray for them both in the prayer room as well as our special focus prayer for each evening. We invite you to participate in this prayer focus. Also, just before Elder Yvonne Lawson actually promotes and prays this first season of prayer, I want to let you know that this collaborative effort that is being brought to you by the Jamaica Union Conference through the five conferences is also available to you, resources are available to you to participate in our LTH, LTAH Bible study. We're inviting you to enroll in the Bible class. You can understand more about the Word of God. So you can go to the website, www.ifollowjesus.org, and you can register to be a part of our Bible classes. When you are finished this week, if you are like me, you will ensure that you're part of the graduating class for this coming week. For our first special season of prayer. We have the ASI Vice President, PRO, here with us this evening to do for us the special prayer, season of prayer, for you and for me, Elder Yvonne Lawson. Our gracious Father and our loving God, we exalt you because there is none like you. We give you thanks and we give you praise for not only being our father, but being our friend. And so we come today recognizing that there are needs. And who else can we come to except you to fulfill those needs? We ask that as you have provided in the past, you will continue to do so. God, you have called us at a time like this. And we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed. We are asking you just now 
that you will continue to pour out your spirit, your sweet spirit, on all your peoples. Father, we recognize that we are living in the time of the end. But here we are, carrying out the gospel commission, taking the good news of salvation to all who stand in need. And so today, we ask that you will do a special job for us, one that we cannot accomplish except through the Holy Spirit. So come now, Holy Spirit. Be with us. Be with all those who will participate in the program, all those who seek after you. We ask that you will ignite in each member a new fire to go out and do great exploits for you, O oh God. We know that the agents of the enemy are not happy right now, but we do not focus on him. We give all the attention to you. So, sweet Jesus, we ask today, come now and infill us. Give us the zeal to do more for you. May the hearts that are to be touched be reached. May they become pliable and may they serve you. We are expecting great miracles from you and I'm sure that you will not disappoint us because you said your word will not return void but it will accomplish that which you purpose. So we thank you in advance, God, and we ask you to have your own sweet way in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. There is power in prayer. And we have come to the point where we will hear the word of the Lord. And there is power, relevance, and satisfaction in the word of the Lord. This evening, I want you to consider, consider a man who has a cause to live for and a purpose to die for. Consider a man who is a mentor to young people and one who interacts and loves all people. Consider a man who knows, loves, and follows Jesus. I present to you a young man who is a mature man, a husband, a father, and yes, a son. Because even now as I speak, his mom is listening, one of the great leaders of the Rejoin Church in Hanover, Sister Seely. I present to you a man who has a passion for godliness, one who has for Jamaica a plan that is spiritually based. And he knows without a shadow of a doubt that as he speaks, the word of the Lord, it will not return unto him void. I pray that tonight the Holy Spirit will take hold of the speaker. And the Holy Spirit will use him in a mighty way to bring a relevant message titled The Disruption. And I pray that we will listen attentively and pray that prayer in our hearts, Lord, speak and let your servants here. Before the speaker comes to us, I say pray in your heart. And uh, before we hear his voice, we will hear the melody and the message of the foster triplets. And then we will hear the voice of our speaker and director of the conversation in Jesus. In this, let's talk about him. I follow Jesus' campaign, Pastor Dane Al Fletcher. We all have our 
our stories, our paths are not the same. If we share what God has brought us through, we would stand amazed. Each testimony given would reveal our greatest need. The healing grace of Jesus is our only remedy. God knows how far we'd go, hopeless and afraid. What if we never had a chance to see His awesome love displayed? Where would we be? Where would we be? Where would we be without grace? Where forgiveness cannot go Oh, the darkest heart can be a place Where mercy finds a home And when we view what lies behind us And how faithful God has been We're humbled by His goodness As we live our lives God knows how far we'd go, hopeless and afraid. What if we never had a chance to see His awesome love displayed? Where would we be? Oh, where would we be? Where would we be? happy tonight to celebrate. We're happy tonight to rejoice because we know that you will make a way for us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. God is truly awesome. God is amazing. It is the first night of the Let's Talk About Him, I Follow Jesus digital evangelistic series. It is the very first night. And while it is the first night, I got responses from some of my friends watching online. They saw my wife, Kadish, yesterday, and they were concerned about our son, Caleb. I just want to let you know that Caleb is fine, that my mom has come from the country to give us some assistance, and I would like to let you know, too, that we do have 
praying mothers. And when I talk about we, I'm not just talking about Kadish and me. I'm speaking also of our co-evangelist and host, Pastor Omar Oliphant. Weeks ago, Elder Nola Oliphant messaged me to say she's praying for me, she's praying for us, she's praying for the Let's Talk About Him, I Follow Jesus initiative. It's good to have mothers who pray for us. It's good to have people who pray for us. And just in case you do not have a mother, you do not have a father, we will be praying for you. We will be praying that God will do something miraculous. God will do something amazing just for you. Now, while we talk about that, I, I should let you know that I'll never forget my roots. I told you that I'm from Hanover. I am a thoroughbred Hanoverian in that my father and my father's father and his father, they are from Hanover. And the same could be said of my mother. And I am happy to let you know that Someone with whom I share common roots or interpreter, should I say, the one signing on the set tonight, she too has roots from Hanover, Woodsville, Hanover, those hills that tell so many tales. It's good to connect with the folks in Woodsville, Hanover, everybody in Hanover and everybody across Jamaica. Great is our God and greatly to be praised. I started off by telling you about my mother. But there's something I should let you know about my mother. I hope she doesn't crack my neck when I tell you this one. Because I will be able to preach the message. And by the way, the message for tonight is all wrapped up in a breadfruit. I will share the message, the sum total of the message in a breadfruit. I went to the market some time ago when my mom, who helped me to go to the market with her from I was but a child, she asked me to buy some stuff. And I was so excited. I thought I did tremendously well. And in reaching home, I said, Mommy, you know what? These are what I got. And guess I got some good prices. And by the time I told her the prices, she looked at me and she said, Carry them back. Carry them back. Mommy was saying I paid really too much for the items which I got at the market. I want to share with you this evening about the disruption. And in the end, I will wrap it all up in my little breadfruit. And I don't want to be of concern or bother, bother to my friends who are watching online. I know that some of you in the diaspora, some of you who are in the UK at the Steve Ned Church, or if it is that you're at the Perrine Church or wherever you are in the, in the diaspora or anywhere you're connecting with us and you really like breadfruit and you can't get it, I want to let you know not to worry. One of these days, God will give us something so much better than good old breadfruit. Amen? We're talking tonight about the disruption. We're talking about the disruption. And I think it would be useful for me to share with you what it means to have a disruption. And within the context of our message tonight, I will share with you that according to the Business Leader UK, to be a disruptor is to create a product, service, or way of doing things which displaces the existing leaders and eventually replacing them at the helm of this sector. Disruptors are generally entrepreneurs, outsiders, and idealists rather than industry insiders or market specialists. So these are the people who cause disruption. And of note to me was the fact that disruptors can be considered to be outsider. The disruption I'm talking about tonight is one that started by an outsider. I'm talking about the disruption tonight. And if you were to really stay with me, you would understand closely. And even outside of what I say, you would note that one of the greatest disruption that the world faces now in this pain is this painful pandemic, COVID-19. And tonight, I am going to tell you the truth about the COVID-19. I'm going to tell you what lies behind the scenes. For truly, the unfolding events, the unfolding events, my friends, in our recent history have brought us to a precarious position. 
COVID-19 has disrupted just about every aspect of our lives. I, while, while I speak about this, there is never a good time to lose our loved ones. We can't even get to mourn in peace. We can't, can't get to even say a proper farewell to our loved ones. We can't get to receive the support from those who really would want to show that they love and to show that they care as we mourn. This disruption is real. There is absolutely no one who escapes. For while over 34.3 million persons have been infected and over 1.04 persons have died, yes, it is a serious cause for concern. But while there is great cause for concern, we can give thanks because over 26.3 persons have recovered from this virus. So even though COVID-19 has disrupted the world, we can celebrate because we know that this disruption will not have dominion over us. I'm happy to know that COVID-19 is not the end of our lives. The truth of the matter is that while we're in this pandemic or global village, has received a brutal blow, where many countries are now on economic ventilators as billion dollar business, businesses, business industries breathe what appears to be their last breath gasping for life. While the novel coronavirus was first identified in Wuhan, China, and that it is a spillover from animal source, it is not conclusive that China is where this virus began. It is not conclusive that China is the origin of our microscopic enemy. Who really knows what happened? Unfortunately and shamefully, some leaders have prejudicially and irresponsibly dubbed the novel coronavirus the China virus, while others have quipped it as Kong flu. My brothers and my sisters, my dear friends, I want you to know that in this global disruption, it is inconsequential to blame China or anyone. The cause may still be mysterious, but the effects are painfully piercing and far-reaching and dangerously deadly. What sense does it make for us to even subscribe to conspiracy theories? I know for sure that you would want to know the truth behind the disruption caused by COVID-19 pandemic. While I am not into conspiracy theories, my friends, there is a video in the making which, which gives a blow-by-blow -blow account of what happens behind the seas, scenes of this seismic disruption. I just want to pause for a moment and identify that my shoelaces have been disrupted. Thanks be to God, the disruption is resolved. So I'm saying that there is a blow-by-blow -blow account of what is happening behind the scenes of this seismic disruption. Until we unravel the mystery, there are three things that this message is concerned about. We are in the COVID crisis because there is a more severe disrupt disruption behind the scenes. And two, we all are directly impacted by this dis disruption and we should do something about it. And thirdly, the disruption will be diverted or destroyed. I said that the disruption is real, but the disruption will be diverted or destroyed. Now for the blow-by-blow blow account of what is happening behind the scenes. I submit to you, my friends, that without controversy, the greatest disruption that the 2020 year has seen is the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of the greatest and largest events around the world have been canceled. Even church is disrupted. Even funerals have been disrupted. Some families have been disrupted. Somebody needs to know that COVID-19 is a great disruptor and it has caused a serious disruption. I submit to somebody that lives have been disrupted and again we are reminded that some businesses have been disrupted to the point of insolvency if not bankruptcy. I submit then 
that there is an outsider who disrupted the plan. I said that there is an outsider. That's the first point I want to emphasize tonight, my friends. There is an outsider who disrupted the plan. Something went wrong which led to our predicament. Someone and something caused the disruption. We are suffocating because a tyrannical and rebellious officer who was dismissed from the heavenly constabulary has not only placed his demonic knee on the neck of our world, but that he has also infected the human family with the seemingly incurably mutating and deadly virus of sin and rebellion. I say sin is a mutating a mutating virus because it raises its ugly head in different ways in unpredictable ways and spreads rapidly destabilizing billions of life on planet earth i submit to you tonight that the devil that outlaw called satan the same old bandit with crooked ways has disrupted god's plan i said that the devil is a bandit. The devil has crooked way. He is the outsider. The crook behind the scenes. He has disrupted God's plan. And if you don't believe me. John the Revelator in Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 declares. And there was war. War where? War in heaven. What a place for war to begin. The Bible says war began in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And the dragon and his angels were cast out. And their place was found no more in heaven. I want you to know that the insider who became an outsider disrupting God's plan was cast out. The outsider was cast out. He is the father of disruption. He is the one who appears to be getting the upper hand of the market. I want somebody, my friend, my brother, my sister, wherever you are, to know that the devil is the culprit. But at the onset in heaven, the Bible says that Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. Walk with me, my friends. The, 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 the word or the name Michael appears five times in the Bible. It appears twice in the book of Daniel. It appears in Jude 9, Jude 9, and it appears in Revelation 12, verse 17. When we look at the name Michael, we understand that the name Michael asks the question, who is like God? And yes, I can answer, there is no God like Jehovah. Somebody needs to know tonight that the name Michael speaks of the, the, the archangel according to Revelation, according to Jude 9. In Daniel 10 verse 13, he is Michael, that angel who fights against the prince of Persia to go to the rescue of Daniel. In Daniel 12 verse 1, Michael will stand up at the end of the world to deliver God's people. Somebody needs to know that when we look at scripture with scripture, looking at what the angel of the Lord does, it is this same angel of the Lord to whom is really speaking or of whom it is really speaking of the Lord himself in Psalm 34 verse 7 where it says the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them and delivereth them in the day of trouble. That's the same Michael. For we are told by Paul in his epistle to the Thessalonians that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of God, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. When we talk about the archangel, the archangel is not simply another angel. The archangel is the commander of the angel. Somebody has got to know that the Jesus is the commander. Jesus is the warrior. Did I say warrior? The name Michael is the warrior name for Jesus Christ. Yesterday, I spoke about the relevance of Jesus. The central figure of history that 
Everything revolves around Jesus. I want somebody to know that when the fullness of time came and that God saw that it was the appointed time for the world to receive deliverance and for an example to be set, he never sent Michael because Maria, Michael would have been a warrior. He, even though he is one and the same, at that time, God sent Jesus because the world never needed a warrior. The world needed a savior. A warrior could not die for the world. A savior could die for the world. Somebody has got to know that Jesus is all in all. If you need a warrior, it is Jesus. If you need a savior, it is Jesus. Anything you need, anyone you need, he is Jesus. I'm excited tonight to let you know that God knows how to use the different functions of Jesus. So we understand that Michael fought and his angels defeated the devil. The devil is the defeated foe. He is the defeated foe. And while we talk about the devil as the defeated foe, let's never forget the devil is very persuasive. In Revelation 12 verse 4, we are told that his tail drew one third of the stars of heaven. And one third of the stars of heaven refer to one, thir one third of the angelic host. He knows how to pers persuade. And in talking about persuasion, I pray that God will give me the gift of persuasion for you tonight. That you will be persuaded that the devil is the author of our tragedies. The devil is responsible for the disruption. In talking about persuasion, I must confess that I have not always used the skills to persuade in a good way. I've not always done that. I've done bad persuasion. It was about January 25, 1998. I was a student at the Montego Bay Community College. We went on a trip to Havana, Cuba. Architectural technology students. Yes, I studied that at, at Mobacom C before I went on to NCU. So there we were. We were in a wonderful place in Havana, a hotel. Some international American continental hotel. And we had like a lovely suite. We had two bedrooms, four beds, and four of us shared that quarters. Sean Brooks, not Sean, not Pastor Sean Brooks, but my friend, my brother Sean Brooks, whose son Jalen was on East Jamaica Conference program yesterday. He was in that group. There was Rudel McFarlane. Rudel McFarlane, yes, at that time, Rudel attended the Cambridge Church. So even though it was not an Adventist institution, a number of us at the school happened to be Seventh-day Adventists. And Rudel at that time, Rudel, if you're listening, I remember those good days when you sang with the five strings quartet. And then there was O'Neill Barrett. I said I have not always used my persuasive skills well. The guys in other rooms declared that they had fun the first night. I wanted to have fun as well. And so in an attempt to have fun, I, I, I said to the guys one night, let's go and see what's happening out there. And then they said, no flesh, no flesh, no flesh. It's already bedtime, so let's just go sleep and tomorrow night we will go. I, I continued, I continued until finally we decided to go and check out what was fun outside. We went and inquired as to where the other members of the team or party, the group that went to Cuba happened to be. There was about 20 of us. And I, I realized that they were in a disco room. I went into a disco room for the very first time. And the moment I stepped in the room, I realized it was not my place. And, and I saw the dancing. I must let you know, those Cuban girls can dance. 
and they look good, proper good. You know what I mean, don't you? And please don't judge me for saying that they look good. Yes, they look good. And by the time I looked, one of my friends was already on the dancing floor. The other one, he was already dancing by himself. I saw smoke in the atmosphere and I realized this place was not for me. Within a minute or so, I was on the outside. I thought they would come after me, but they were not present. I waited and I waited and I waited. And for some reason, I never thought I could have gone to get them. I, I, I went away. And I was there in the room. I waited and I was troubled inside. I was troubled. I, I just never wanted anything to go wrong with them. And while I waited, it was about 1.30 in the morning when I was watching TV in anticipation of their return that, that I heard some sounds and I felt relieved. I want somebody to understand that even if you happen to be in the wrong place, I want you to know that unlike me, God would not have brought you to that wrong place. But like me, God is concerned that you're at that wrong place. And God wants you to be at a place of safety. God wants you to be at a place of safety. I understand that somebody tonight may be in the wrong place. Your life may be out of place. The outsider may have displaced your life. But I want you to know that even though there was war in heaven and that the enemy was cast out and he happens to be roaming this earth he is seeking to devour he is seeking to deceive and yes he was successful in the garden of Eden when he caused our four parents Adam and Eve to sin not because they were needy because all their needs were met they had all they could have had they had all that they needed they sinned not because they were needy they sinned because they were greedy and so rebellion came to this earth i remind you that the devil has persuasive skills so he persuaded one third of the angelic host to follow after him one out of three of the angels in heaven followed after the devil one out of three. Now I want you to understand that if one out of three left, it means that for every one that the devil has, God has two. Are you hearing me? For every one bad angel that the devil has, God has to. I don't know whose side you want to be on, but I want to be on the Lord's side. For even if it is angel power against angel power, good will triumph over evil. Somebody needs to know that the angel of the Lord will encamp round about them that fear him and deliver them in the day of trouble. And I want you to know that God has got enough angel to provide security for you. The road cop may have caused a disruption, but God has things under control. God has things under control. And while we speak about God having things under control, I said that, yes, the disruption began in heaven. Heaven, that place where God dwells. God took a risk in making Lucifer very attractive and assigned him leadership role. And Lucifer elevated himself on a pompous pedestal. I want to suggest to you that he was a good angel. In Ezekiel 28 verses 14 and 15 we're told, Thou art the anointed cherub that cover it, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down, up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. Iniquity is deep-seated rebellion. Iniquity is straying away from the path of righteousness. So that iniquity was born in the heart of Lucifer. Lucifer, which means son of the morning. Iniquity was found in his heart because he was so proud. He was so proud when he looked at his beauty, when he looked at his responsibilities. He desired to have a higher position and I want to let you know tonight that it was that same rascal that same bandit who began the I and I movement 
The devil began the I and I movement. And if you, if you don't believe me, go to Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 14. The Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the earth which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast set in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now I want you to understand that there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to be like God. But for Lucifer, it's not simply that he wanted to have godly traits, but that he wanted to act or to be in the place of God. What a devil! Now this devil came to earth, and I said that he started the I and I movement, and don't mix up what I'm saying. I never said that he started Rastafarianism. He started the I and I movement. Because the devil is filled with selfishness. He's filled with sin. And he's filled with pride. And when you check it out. That same little letter I is in the middle of sin. That same little letter I is in the, way, is in the middle of pride. Be careful of how you focus on yourself. You know, I, when I talk about this message, uh, please forgive me. You know I don't mean any offense. But please forgive me. It is a very good thing that some of us are not so lookable. Because if we were even more lookable than we were, we would be worshipping ourselves. Are you hearing me? It is a good thing. Because some of us, when we look at ourselves, we are puffed up with pride because of how we look. But irrespective of how you look, all you need to do is to give God the glory. And quickly I learned that there are at least four different types of people. You have people who are... Ugly, ugly. That is, they are not easy on the eyes and they have bad ways. You have people who are uh, ugly, pretty. Or, 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 uh, that, that, that means they, they have, uh, uh, they're not easy on the eyes, but they have good ways. And then you have some people who are pretty ugly. That is, they look good to the eyes, but they have bad ways. And then you have people who are Pretty, pretty. I, I want to let you know that it doesn't matter how ugly you look. If you have God on your side, God can fix you up. God can turn you around. And God can make you look good when God removes the traces of sin from your lives. I've seen some people who have been bruised and battered by sin. And when God takes them and fixes them, you wouldn't believe that these are they who were where they were. Somebody has got to know tonight that God has a way of turning things around. It doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter where you are. God has a way of turning things around. God has a way of turning things around. So I said, yes, the devil really is responsible for what is happening, the chaos, which was not intended to be a part of God's plan. God made a perfect earth with perfect beings, Adam and Eve. I want to emphasize then that we are actors in the drama, but our antagonist, the devil, is the defeated foe. The devil is the defeated foe. He lost in heaven. He lost at Calvary. He will be losing again. The devil is the defeated foe. And I want you to understand too that the devil has followers. For even Jesus declared in St. John 8, 44, when people were behaving in an ungodly manner, he said, ye are of the father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. I want you to understand that there are some of God's people who are not living like they belong to God. They are not living like they are God's children. But I've got good news for you. Even though Jesus said that you are, of the, you are from your father the devil, 
he himself knows that he was there actively involved in our creation and irrespective of who we are we are children of God but we behave as though we have a strained relationship with God acting in accordance with demonic ways but I want you to understand tonight that there was a song and please forgive me there is a song that said it is you spreading shame and scandal in the family. Your daddy ain't your daddy, but your daddy doesn't know. I want you to know you may be acting like a child of the devil, but your daddy, the devil, is not your daddy, but your daddy doesn't know. It's time for you to stop spreading shame and scandal in the human family and live like you are a child of God, bought with a price, Saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Live like you are saved. Live like you are sanctified. I want to let you know that there is a secret that the devil doesn't want you to know. And it is found in Revelation 12 verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you. Having a great wrath. Because he knoweth. That he hath but a short time. I want you to know. That you are not a spectator. In the drama. You are actor. You are actively involved. Like the football games I see on TV. Where the stands are empty. I want you to know. That even now. We are on stage. No one on planet earth is a spectator. No one is simply watching. We all are actively involved. And so I say the drama is on. There is the disruptor of the devil. The one who is the father of our pain and misery. It is the devil himself who orchestrates that your family be disrupted. It is the devil himself who orchestrated that we have this coronavirus. It is the devil himself who gives you that nagging antagonistic neighbor. It is the devil himself that causes you to have problems in your family. And I want you to understand very well that every family will have problems. We are imperfect beings fallen in sin. I am an imperfect man married to an imperfect woman. And, 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 and then we expect to have a perfect marriage. It is impossible. But when things don't go the way I desire, the problem is not me. It is my wife like in the garden of Eden with Adam and Eve I want somebody to understand that relationships are imperfect but they can work God has a way of bringing something good even out of the bad that happens in our lives even conflicts can be resolved even problems can be solved it doesn't matter what is happening in your life it doesn't matter what disruption the devil brings your way or God is able I know somebody tonight needs to make a decision for Jesus. And that's why I encourage you according to 1 Peter 5 verse 8. That you should cast all your care upon him for he careth for you. And be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary like a roaring lion goes about seeking to devour you. Now while the devil goes around like a roaring lion. The good news is that Jesus is not a roaring lion. Jesus is the conquering lion. So when the roaring lion comes upon the conquering lion, the conquering lion will always conquer the roaring lion. And that's good news. Good news that the conquering lion will always prevail. My friends, I want to let you know that yes, you are involved. I am involved. We're not in the audience. We're engaged in the battle. We're engaged in the battle. It's a plan of the enemy to disrupt our lives. Now I submit to you that yes, there is a battle. There is a struggle. There has been a disruption caused by the devil. We are not mere spectators. We are actively engaged, actively involved. But I want you also to remember that there is a solution. I've been to the back of the book. I know how this story will end. 
the Bible in Revelation 20, verses 9 and 10, suggests, And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. And this, my friends, would be after Jesus would have returned and the saints of God would be in heaven and those who would be dead would, would have, those who, the wicked would have been dead on the earth and the devil would, would have been in the bottomless pit. That is, he would have no one to tempt. It is after Jesus would have gone to heaven and would be coming back that when the devil looks upon the city with which grudge and, and, and believing, looking at the, the, the large army which he has, believing he can capture the, the city that the Bible says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into a lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever. Somebody, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, I've been to the back of the book. The devil is responsible, but God will bring about a solution. I know that according to the plan of the enemy, according to how the devil would want the story to end, the wages of sin would be death full stop. But God, through Jesus Christ, decided to edit the script. It, you know, when you go to school, you use liquid paper. I want to let you know that it was not liquid paper. Jesus Christ covered that full stop with his precious blood, inserted a comma, continued the sentence, and said, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. I want you to know that the author of disruption, the author of destruction, would want the COVID-19 virus, uh, the, the pandemic, to disrupt the world to the point that we lose hope. But I've got good news for you. The God of the book of the Bible is the deliverer. For we are told that Michael fought and his angels. Michael fought the devil, kicked him out of heaven. He was cast to earth. Yesterday, I preached about how Jesus overcame the devil in the wilderness of temptation. Somebody has got to know that whenever Jesus comes upon the devil, Jesus Christ is always the winner man. Somebody needs to know that Jesus Christ, he's always victorious. Jesus Christ is always watching over us. You know, hell is real. If you go to hell, you go to a place that was not prepared for you. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. That's what Matthew 25, 41 tells you. Just before I take my seat, I go back to my three bread, bread fruits. I said I bought three bread fruits at the market. And while I tell you about the bread fruits, I remind you that the real reason behind COVID-19 is that there is a wicked enemy who lost his first estate in the kingdom of God. And having lost his first estate in the kingdom of God, he wants you to lose that estate too. He does not want you to be saved. The devil is not a, three a, a, a person, an ugly person with a three-pronged fork. The devil is an attractive creature. He never lost his beauty in heaven. He still looks good and he still seduces. The devil wants you to lose your way. But Jesus wants to save you. Jesus wants to save you. I say I go to my breadfruit. I go to my breadfruit. I bought three breadfruits, not this. I looked at one. It looked very well or very good. I liked it. I decided to put it down. Because it had a little hole, can I say it may have been bee sting, that something disrupted the breadfruit. I decided to put it down. And, 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 and even though it was disrupted and I put it down, I searched and I searched. I wanted to buy two breadfruits. I put it down. I put it down not just once. I put it down twice, that disrupted breadfruit. It happened, my friends, that after putting it down twice, I got two breadfruits. I got two breadfruits. And when I was about to use those to, 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 to leave, I, I said to the brother, he 
who was so gracious to say, well, put it aside. He said to me, well, you can have it. I brought the three breadfruits home. And guess what? The two other solid breadfruits riped. They never got to realize their intended purpose. I lost those two breadfruits because they riped. And yes, the breadfruit, some of you may see it on the screen. That breadfruit that was disrupted is still standing. I want to let you know that the breadfruit was disrupted, but it was not destroyed. Your life may have been disrupted, but it was not destroyed. I want you to understand that something may have stung you. Something may have bitten you. The devil may have bitten you. It could be that the devil is biting you through your very spouse, through even a relative or a neighbor or a co-worker or a boss. But even though you may have been bitten, even though your life may have been disrupted, your life is not destroyed. You may have had so many other disruptions, but you need to give God thanks because your life was not destroyed. So I spoke about that one breadfruit. The others riped. Now while those breadfruits riped, I want to let you know that I looked at them and for the very first time, I said to myself, these breadfruits, they never got to meet their intended purpose. They are ripe. I can't roast them anymore. I can't boil them anymore. But I'm not going to throw them away. I want somebody to know that today, for the very first time in my life, I decided to make a breadfruit punch. I decided to make breadfruit punch. Uh, th those breadfruits, they never got to meet their intended purpose. But with some water, with some vanilla, with some nutmeg and some cinnamon, I was able to make some punch. Somebody, you my brother, you my sister, you may not have met your intended purpose. You may be of a ripe old age, but I got good news for you. Your life may have been disrupted. Your life may have been brought off course, but God has a way of turning things around. You may not have met your intended purpose, but God has another plan. I made another plan for the breadfruit. And so, like me who made that plan for the breadfruit, I want to let you know that I made that decision to make the punch. I started with a little bit just in case it never tasted well. Before too long, I was able to make many bottles of breadfruit punch. And as of today, I won't ever throw another ripe breadfruit away. You are God's ripe breadfruit. God won't throw you away. You are that disrupted breadfruit you may have been stung you may have been considered to have to be of no good no use even rejected but i want to let you know god sees you god knows that you are disrupted but not destroyed somebody tonight needs to celebrate because even though this world is disrupted it is not yet destroyed god has another plan god has a way of Working things out. Amen. You're God's breadfruit. God's breadfruit will decide tonight. See, if you don't believe me, I got some of Mr. Chin's soy milk. Mixed it with the breadfruit, water, cinnamon, vinegar. Not, not vinegars, please. Don't call me vinegar breadfruit punch. Vanilla. Not me, and boy, I, I wish I could put it on the market. If I put this on the market, I'll never be poor again. But remember, God has you on the market. You are marketable because though you may have a hole in your life, God can make things work. And God sees that your life may be disrupted, but you're not destroyed. Michael will be to your rescue. You're getting the link. You're getting the link. You're getting the link. You're going to decide for Jesus tonight. Jesus. The real disruptor. Who eventually disrupts the plan of the devil. Let Jesus disrupt the plan of the devil. As you listen to this song. And make your decision using the link. Allow Jesus. 
There are days when I don't pray And from God's words I stray I forget about God And it makes him sad But he loves me in spite of me Yes, he loves me in spite of me I have cheated and lied and feel guilty inside I have gone my own way and from his will I have strayed but he loves me in spite of me yes he loves me in spite of me oh he loves me yes he loves me he loves me in spite of me oh he loves me yes he loves me he loves me in spite of me i've been wretched and weak and at times i'm not me I've not trust and obey, and from his will I am strayed, but he loves me in spite of me. Yes, he loves me in spite of me. And though sinful my heart, God's words never depart, undeserving I be. God's grace still saves me Cause he loves me in spite of me Yes, he loves me in spite of me Oh, he loves me Yes, he loves me He loves me in spite of me Oh, he Words never depart, undeserving I be. God's grace still saves me, cause He loves me in spite of me. Yes, He loves me in spite of me. I just want to thank Brother Kerry Sales for that powerful reminder that God loves me in spite of me. God loves you in spite of you. You may have been disrupted. You may have caused disruption. Persons may have given up on you. But God loves you so much that he hasn't given up on you. Others may have considered you to be a misfit, an outcast. Yes, others may have given up on you, but God has not given up on you. And even if you have missed your originally intended purpose, God has another plan for you. Choose Jesus now. Choose Jesus and be saved from your sin. Sign up on that card. Sign up for prayer. We will pray for you. Sign up for Bible study. And if you want to know more about why there is so much suffering, you can go to the I Follow Jesus app or website and you can look at Lesson 4 which speaks about why so much suffering. Beautiful list lesson written by Pastor Damien Chambers. I know it's late. Yes, I know it's late. And yes, even though we have permission to travel this late, we know that we have to be careful. So Pastor Oliphant will now pray on your behalf as you decide to live like God has another plan for you and like God has not given up on you. Be God's breadfruit, chosen even though you may be disrupted. 
everlasting God and Father. We are here this evening and we have recognized that we are both disrupted as well we are as well as we are disruptors. Our lives have been impacted by the pain and agony, not just of COVID, but also of sin. We have seen its effects, not just physically, but also spiritually. We have experienced the challenges that are associated with this, but we are also thankful that you can change the story. This evening, there are a number of individuals who are seeking a change in their lives, a change in their circumstance, a change in their future. And just as your manservant has this evening reminded us that where full stops have been placed, you can make that into a comma. Just as how your manservant has reminded us this evening that what was made or what was written off can be turned and made into something beautiful. We're asking you this evening to make something beautiful in the lives of each listener, of each viewer, of each individual who is engaging with us on these platforms. We're asking you, Almighty Father, to pierce through the darkness of our own lives' experience and to lift us up into a heavenly realm. Move us from sinful living into victory over sin. Move us, Almighty Father, from this place where we are wrapped up with the enemy to the place where we are now at rest in your own arms. Thank you for the message this evening. Thank you for reminding us that even though Satan disrupted the beauty of your creation, thank you for the great reminder that Jesus Christ came to give us a fresh opportunity. Bless each listener and allow the words from this message to find its own place in our hearts and in our lives is our asking in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you on behalf of the entire Jamaica Union family for taking the time to be with us this evening. Whether you have been watching on WCCN, Bless TV and its affiliate network cable stations, NCU Television or NCU Radio, or joining us through either of the social media platforms across the Jamaica Union territory for this special message, the disruption. We're so very grateful that through the blood of Jesus Christ, you and I can receive a hope for our future, a hope that passes beyond breadfruits that can be written off to be giving us a punch that can make our lives profitable, not just for time, but for eternity. On behalf of the entire broadcast team here at the East Jamaica Conference, 74 Constant Spring Road, streaming and beaming to you throughout the entire world, I am Omar Oliphant saying, walk good, stay COVID free, and join us as we close off with our theme song, Let's Talk About Him. Wipe all the tears away. 
Woo! <laughs> 